All right, hello and welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 148. Uh, we officially have the NFL schedule for the season. Uh, as you guys know, if you have listened to this for you know any sort of amount of time, you know the NFL schedule release is like a Christmas morning for me. When I wake up on that day, the excitement ahead of what is to come is um, its one of my favorite days. And I know that's probably kind of corny because there's not actual football happening or uh it you know we already know who the teams are playing throughout the season it's more so just nailing down what dates they're going to be playing what networks those games are going to be showing on at what times um but just getting a full picture of what the nfl season is going to look like you know when that bye week falls when you can plan that trip to an away game that you've been wanting to visit like those things start to come together and you start to really be able to envision the season which gets me personally very excited um and uh i i think part of it also is just you know we're sitting here in mid-may now the last really interesting piece of football that we had was the nfl draft in late april and you're just kind of waiting for things to start picking up with OTAs and then training camp in the summer. So there's not a lot going on in terms of football at the moment. It is kind of that dead period. Uh, so it um, it's the one thing we have at this point in time to get excited about. Uh, I also think just as a lifelong Browns fan, um, you know, the team has not had the ability to break my heart yet at this point in time. So I can still look at it and be like, yeah, we... 10 11 wins on this schedule for sure um and you know they haven't had to let me down at any point in time throughout the season yet so maybe that's why i've always been attached to this day in general uh, i also thoroughly enjoy the social media content that is put out there um you know the chargers are a team that always does a really phenomenal job of having their finger on the pulse of what is happening on the internet and what is interesting to people uh thoroughly enjoyed their Sims um, video that they put together for their schedule release. There there were a lot of good ones. It's become a big spectacle um, and just honestly goes to show that NFL is always king. Like the NFL rules all things that, you know, a primetime slot on ESPN and NFL Network is getting coverage for a schedule schedule release where we already know who all of the teams are playing that would not happen in any other league in any other sport it is really just the nfl uh, where people care so much about that so uh, i'm personally very excited about it and i'm going to cover a lot of my thoughts on the schedule and just the implications of of the schedule for the brown season uh what i think everything really means for the team but first i wanted to cover some Cavs talk because uh, unfortunately the Cavs are now out of the playoffs um, after losing to the Celtics. Uh, you know, look, when the series started, I think most Cavs fans realistically felt like it was probably going in that direction. It was nice to obviously get the one win on the road, which was very crazy, winning by 24, I believe. Uh, and I don't think anyone had that on their bingo card of if the Cavs were going to win a game, I think most people thought it would happen at home just because of how different this team has been uh, at home and on the road, especially in the series against the Magic. Uh, I think everyone pretty much thought that would happen at home if it were to happen. So to have it happen on the road in such a dominant fashion was pretty crazy. Uh, and then by the last game, obviously, like we still haven't had Jarrett. Donovan was out. Uh, it felt like everything was kind of falling apart at that point. Um, so I don't think anyone is taking this loss too hard. It's more so just the overall season that the Cavs had that I think has left a weird taste in people's mouths because uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty on the direction that they go from here. The team has been kind of battling Donovan Mitchell wanting to be out of Cleveland rumors pretty much since he stepped foot in this city. And it's kind of been a cloud over the team, um, regardless of how Donovan feels or not. There's always media reports about Donovan wants to play here. This team should look to acquire Donovan Mitchell. It's just been an ongoing thing. Um, and then just in general this season, I think there were some guys not really living up to expectations, particularly Darius Garland, who you know, was on such an upwards trajectory prior to the season that to have him kind of fall flat this season was a little tough to watch. And, you know, 
obviously the team made it around further than they did in the playoffs last year. So in theory, that is a win overall to have them continuing to show growth. Um, but I think if you watch the team and you watch the full season, you feel like there is still so much potential there that is untapped um, and that it they haven't maxed out what they are able to do as a group. So it's frustrating to watch a team that isn't reaching their full potential, um, even though they are, you know, on paper growing year over year. It just doesn't always feel like that when you're watching the games. I think there's a lot of moments where we felt a lot better uh, as fans while watching them than we have throughout uh, a large portion of this season and and the playoffs. Uh, after the Cavs fell to the Celtics, it took about Gosh, 15 minutes for Shams to release a lengthy article uh, detailing the turmoil within the Cavs organization in the last year. I think these are a lot of things that fans and media members have assumed have been going on, uh, but no one had obviously any direct confirmation of it. And look, we still don't have direct confirmation that any of these things are 100% accurate. You already have Donovan Mitchell clapping back at tons of reports right now um, of, you know, people saying certain things about how he feels and him being like, that's not true and that's not accurate and, and tweeting about it. So, um, you know, I think um, we, t we should continue to take all of this with a grain of salt, uh, but at the same time, you can't totally ignore it because it is being put out there for a reason. Whatever the source is, I don't know, but it is uh, certainly being discussed within certain parts of the organization, whether it's players, whether it's ownership, coaching, leadership, it, you know, it's, it's happening and it's coming from somewhere. Um, so I think just to give some high level, I feel like the most important takeaways that I felt from reading through this article um, Darius Garland, uh, I think, had one of the bigger bombshells within the article and it was basically that his reps are saying that they could seek a trade from the Cavs if Donovan Mitchell extends um you know these two have had certainly some good moments together but I definitely don't think overall they have clicked in a way that people have really wanted them to for being two small undersized guards uh they just haven't meshed completely. Um, so it doesn't totally shock me to see that Darius might want out if they uh, are intending on making Donovan kind of the centerpiece of this team because uh, he just might not know where he fits in there. Um, and then on Donovan's side, some of the, the big points from the article were that he and other players on the team have seriously doubted JB throughout the season just when it comes to his game planning um, his leadership. Uh, that was a common theme throughout the article and honestly media reports over the last couple of weeks of, you know, discussions in the locker room after games of people questioning JB's game plan and questioning the decision decisions that he is making, uh, which is obviously not a great place to be. Um, you know, there, there wasn't anything too, I feel like, crazy about Donovan in that article that we didn't already know. You know, I don't think he wants out of Cleveland as much as some people make it seem. Honestly, in the article, it talked about how he might be looking to sign a, a long, you know, a long-term extension in Cleveland. So um, I guess that'll just kind of be something that we have to keep an eye on that combination of if Donovan signs, what happens to Darius? If Donovan doesn't sign, um, you know, how, how do you build this team around Darius or others after the year that this team just had. Um, <clears throat> the big piece about Jared Allen was that he refused to get an injection to play through injury during the playoffs. So I don't want to harp on this one too much because I'm, I'm not sure the extent of like, could further damage have been done to him? You know, like I, I just, I don't know the medical details of his injury in a way that I feel comfortable totally speculating on it, but um, you know, it's, it's always not good to hear that a player isn't looking to fight through um, and go to the very end. Look, I don't want anyone to be putting their careers in jeopardy because obviously, you know, it could be over tomorrow and they're trying to make the best of every moment they have. But um, 
not something you want to hear just from a mentality standpoint. Uh, and then for Mobley, um, the, the big thing that people were talking about was that his reps told Colby Altman not to draft him in 2021. I don't think this was that shocking because I think people don't realize how often agents are telling teams those things, saying he wants to go here, don't draft him, those, those type of things before a draft. I don't think that means Evan Mobley hates being in Cleveland, that he has never wanted to be here. Like I think he has come into himself nicely in this city and um, you know feels decent about what he is doing. So I don't think that's something to be super concerned about. Um, I think what's worse though is the the portion of the article that mentioned that the team drafted him knowing that he is the type of player that you're going to have to spend some time developing. Um, but the team has not put anything, uh, put any time and focus into developing him. Um, so it's like, why would you draft a player knowing that that is the type of player he is at this point in time and not make that a priority for the organization? Um, you know, I feel like Mobley really has grown in a lot of ways and he went out with a bang, um, in that last game against Boston, but, um, it's just frustrating to know that the, the organization hasn't fully rallied around him in the way that I think they should, if they, they want that to be a focus. Um, so yeah, those were, those are the big ones. Uh, look, I, I don't even know what to predict for what is going to happen this off season. I feel like it could go in numerous directions. Um, I'm concerned that like Kobe Altman isn't taking a lot of heat in this article because I feel like when it comes to all of this team building stuff, like this should fall back on him in a lot of ways. And it doesn't feel like it is based on the article. Um, maybe a lot of the article is coming from people within his camp and you know within that world um and that's why that is written the way it is but um i think blame needs to go around into a lot of places if you're going to want to you know talk about who has done wrong i i think he also equally should be taking blame for the the position the team is in at this point in time um you know, my my best bet if they were to shake things up this offseason, let's say they are choosing not to move on with the core four on this team and are looking to shake things up, I think Donovan and Evan are the two that you probably build around. Um, and then you try to find a trade for Darius or um, and a trade for Jared as well. I think that's probably the direction um, that you go in if you're really looking to shake things up. But Look, we'll see. They could continue with that core four and try to add some more shooters, um, which is what they tried to do last offseason, but I don't think it really worked out as well as they were hoping for with um, George Niang, Matt, Max Struess, you know, struggling a lot of the time. So we will just have to see what direction they go. But it's been an interesting few days in the Cavs world. When that article drops 15 minutes after the Cavs lose, you know, Shams was sitting on that, ready to go. Um, it's, uh, it makes things really, really interesting. Um, okay. So now for the Browns schedule, so exciting. Um, initially, obviously it came out, it was coming out kind of days before the schedule release. It didn't seem like the Browns were getting the London game against the Jags, which I was personally sad about just because I kind of wanted to plan a trip to London to go watch them. Uh, so I was, I was super bummed about that, but um, you know, from like a fan sitting at home standpoint, I understand why people don't like the international games, like 9.30 a.m. usually on the East Coast. It's not optimal football watching experience. Um, so I understand why people didn't want that. But I personally was a little bit bummed out um, that they, they didn't get the, uh, the London game. Someday we will get to London. Um, but uh, Initially, also one game I'm definitely going to be going to for away games is Philly. That one is happening October 13th. So I will be in Philly. Hope some of you will be in Philly as well. Um, and I'd like to maybe try to plan for one more away game. It seems like a lot of people are doing Vegas. A lot of people are doing New Orleans. Um, I think those are probably the two most popular ones. I've seen some Jacksonville talk as well. Um, maybe a little bit of DC for the commanders, but I don't think anyone like loves that stadium there. So uh, it's not it's not a huge priority for people uh, to say the least, but um, it's, uh, 
always exciting to start seeing people plan those trips and get excited about going to to see the Browns on the road. Um, initial thoughts on just the structure of the schedule. I feel like it is extremely different from, from what they had last year. Last year, if you remember, they had a bye in week five, which was so, so early. Uh, and then the division games were extremely front-loaded on the schedule. So I remember they played all three of our division opponents within the first like four weeks of the season or something crazy like that. It was really quick. Um, that they got them this year they don't have a division game until week seven so uh, it's deep into the season that they um, are just playing other opponents not within the division which will keep things really interesting for just who is going to be able to win the division and the AFC in general with the AFC North being such a stacked division um and the bye week this year is 10, which is great. Um, I think that's great for the players' sake. I think um, week five was just way too early. Uh, so it's nice that it kind of falls really more in the middle of the season and they have an opportunity to regroup at that point in time, uh, especially before they have a really challenging back half of the season. Uh, that's kind of one of my other big points is that challenging back half of the season. So. Weeks 12 through 18 are brutal on the schedule. Um, the earlier part of the schedule is a little bit easier. So you start with the Cowboys, which is probably going to be a challenging game. Tom Brady's first game um, as a commentator, which is going to be really interesting to see. 425, it's not prime time, but like with that being Tom Brady's first game that it, and against the Cowboys, that's basically as prime time as you can get. Um, so that one's going to be challenging, but then you have Jags, Raiders, Giants, Commanders, like those are all winnable games that you really need to start things off strong um, because that latter half of the schedule, like I talked about, is going to be really challenging. So 12 through 18, you have home Steelers. Steelers is always going to be challenging regardless of the talent that that team has. That game will always be challenging. Then you have at the Broncos which is a team they always struggle with on the road. It is really hard to go into Denver and play well, so that one is going to be tough. Then you have at the Steelers, which once again, another one that this team never seems to win on the road. They do not go into Pittsburgh and win games. If they're going to win, it's usually at home, so that one is going to be challenging. Then you have home Chiefs. I mean, enough said there, defending Super Bowl champs. Luckily, you have them at home, but like still going to be challenging. Uh, very much hope Taylor Swift is going to be there. Would make me very, very happy. Um, and then after that, you have at the Bengals. Obviously, we don't really know what the, that team is going to look like this year after they had Joe Burrow injuries last season. Their defense really struggled at times. Um, so curious to see what they're going to look like this year. But, you know, that's predicting to be a competitive game. Then you have home Dolphins, um, which is a team that's consistently competing for their division. Very lucky to have them at home in late December because the Dolphins do not do well in cold weather environments. So I think that's a really big deal to be able to get them in Cleveland. I think it's December 29th is when they have them on a Sunday night football game. So uh, big, big deal there. And then you have um, at Ravens to close the season. You can only hope this game would be like for the division at this point in time. I think the schedule makers obviously are thinking that is a strong possibility. They usually plan those games um, for that reason. They want to see, you know, that last week, week 18, be meaningful. So um, I think they're hoping that that game will be for the division. Look, both teams are going to be banged up at that point in time. You just hope that um, you aren't as banged up and, and can tough through and be able to win that game. But that is a really tough stretch to close out the season. Um, also within that stretch, you have four primetime games. So um, you have that home Steelers game to start things off as a Thursday night football game. That away Broncos game is then a Monday night football game. So you have, um, you know, a, almost like a mini buy there um, for those primetime games. But then you're coming um, back to Steelers, which is a regular time, then that Bengals away game is a Thursday night football game once again. Uh, and then the Dolphins game right after that is a Sunday night football game. 
Uh, so those are those are a lot of primetime games really packed in quickly, uh, especially having two Thursday night games, which I know teams generally don't like that close to each other. Um, you know, I think is is going to be pretty brutal. And like I mentioned, you just hope that everyone is somewhat healthy at that point in time that they're able to get through it um, and, you know, can make that a priority. Look, at first glance, like I mentioned, like it's you can look at these schedules and be like, yeah, this is a 10-win team. But I look at the schedule and say, this should be a 10-win team. On paper, they have the toughest strength of schedule in the NFL. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because it is based off of the records of teams last season. And obviously, the AFC North was one of the best divisions in football last season. So that alone has put... I believe the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Browns all in the top three of the hardest schedules. The Bengals is much lower since they were last in the division. Um, so you just know that, you know, those AFC North games are always going to be competitive. Uh, but beyond that, like, I, I try not to get too bogged down with, you know, having the toughest schedule because a lot of these teams... I mean, even if a team has a different quarterback, that's a completely different team that you're playing the following season. So uh, it doesn't mean too much, but um, I think it mostly is just a testament to the AFC North and the challenge that it is to be a team in that division year after year. I mean, look, it feels good to like be a part of such a talented group, but God, it's so annoying sometimes when um, week after week you just want to break and uh, you can't, you can't take any of those division games for granted. They're always going to be challenging. Uh, so yeah, this should be a 10-win team. They're probably going to drop a game or two in the back half of the season that you think they should win just on the basis of fatigue and being exhausted um, from all of these primetime games, from some of the traveling that they have to do. I think it's going to be a little bit tiring for them on some of those short weeks. So you just assume they, they drop a game here or there that they, they should win. But um, overall, I, I still really believe that this is a, a good football team. And I am uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. We are, gosh, how many months away now? We've got, let's not count May. We've got June, July, August. So we've got like three probably three and a half months until the season starts, maybe a little earlier than that. August starts the preseason games to get everyone pumped up. So we've got some time left, but we're getting there. Keep powering through. Um, but that is all I have for you guys today. Just really wanted to cover the um, the Cavs stuff and then obviously the the craziness of the NFL schedule release. Um, I hope you are all getting excited for the Brown schedule as well. If you are watching on the YouTube, please comment and let me know if you're planning to go to any of the Browns away games, where you're going. If you're planning to go to any of the home games, let me know that as well, um, just to get everyone excited and planning for the year. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you could leave me a review or rating on Spotify or Apple, subscribe on the YouTube, comment like I mentioned on the YouTube, would very much appreciate that. Uh, and as always, go Browns.